Again, the topic of today's discussion is hell. All right. Now, before we go into it, I just want to ask a few questions. Maybe just one question this time for the sake of time. Those who are online can answer as well as those who are present in the room. Okay. So I want to ask you all, what was the purpose of hell, the creation of hell? Judgment of the fallen angels. Anyone else? Anyone else? Same thing. Anyone else? Fallen angels. Anyone else? Hmm? Satan, fallen angels. Anyone else? That's it? All right. So hopefully, as we go into this lesson, that question will be answered as far as the creation of hell and its purpose. Okay. Now we're going to start off in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 27. <clears throat> Hebrews 9 and 27. And the reason why we're starting in Hebrews 9 and 27 is because a great deception has taken place in the earth. And that deception, or at least one of those deceptions, is to convince us that, that hell does not exist. Okay? And that the eternal judgment, as it is spoken of in Scripture, does not exist. So hopefully with this lesson we will dispel that lie and we'll also open up your understanding concerning hell and the importance as to why we should recognize that there is a such thing as hell and an eternal judgment. So we're going to start in the book of Hebrews 9 and 27. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. Now before you read that, I want you to start at verse 25. Hebrews 9, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 25. And this will give us the context as to what Hebrews is speaking about when it says it is appointed unto men once to die. They're going to give us an example. Hebrews 9 and 27. Go ahead. Uh, 9 and 25. 9 and 25. So lock it. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Exactly. So what does it mean when it states, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others? For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. What is that, what is that explaining? Hebrews 9, 25, going into 26. Okay. All right. Anyone else? This is saying that um, not yet that he should offer himself often it means like Christ just keep offering himself to be a sacrifice for the atonement of our sins. You know what I'm right. saying? Like just for our for the, the sins that we've been doing wrong. That's just like him going and sacrificing himself over and over and over again. Exactly. Exactly. So basically, what you both said is correct. Okay. It tells us that he should not offer himself often. Because we know under the old covenant, the high priest went often mm -hmm. into the Holy of Holies to offer a sacrifice for the nation of Israel. Yeah. It was done year to year on the Day of Atonement, right? Yeah. But with Christ, it's different. What's the difference? Read on. Uh, verse 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Exactly. So this is the difference between Christ and the priest of the old covenant. Christ only came once to offer himself for sin. Okay? He only came once to offer himself for sin. So now this is going to clear up what we read in the next verse. 
Go ahead, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. So the same way Christ only came once, we only have one chance. The same way Christ went or Christ came once, we only have one chance to come into this earth. Go ahead, read that again. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. So it's appointed to us once to die. So we don't have multiple chances to keep coming back and to get it right as they tell you through reincarnation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. But after this, the judgment. But after this, after we have come once, then is the judgment. And we're going to go into that judgment today as we go into the concept of hell, according to the Bible. Okay? Finish off with 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Okay? Go ahead. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And the only time he's coming back is the second time, his second coming. So Christ is not being reincarnated and neither are we. Okay? So now let's get into it. Let's go to the book of 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. For if the Most High spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Exactly. So if God spared not the angels that sinned, but did what? But cast them down to hell. But cast them down to hell. So for those who answered that hell was created for the judgment of the angels, you were correct. Okay, hell was set for the judgment of the rebellious angels. So it says, he spared not the angels that sinned, but did what? But cast them down to hell. Go ahead. And delivered them into chains of darkness. And he delivered them into chains of darkness. He delivered them into chains of darkness. We're going to show that those chains actually exist in this region we call hell. As we go into some of the records we're going to go into. Go ahead. To be reserved unto judgment. To be what? To be reserved unto judgment. So why are the, what are the angels waiting for? They're waiting for judgment. Okay? They are waiting for judgment. So now, one thing I would like to mention is that when we come into this truth, I have to mention this because you may have people online who may have seen others teach concerning hell, and they may teach that hell is just a state of existence opposed to an actual place that exists and some may use the scripture and interpret the scripture as the angels that sinned that were cast into, into change as being as being israelites and i'm just put that out there in case any of you have ran into that doctrine the angels here that sinned is not speaking about israelites okay and the change is not speaking about the chains of slavery the transatlantic slave trade okay this is speaking about hell as we will prove throughout the course of today's lesson and we're also going to show you the importance of believing why and knowing why mm -hmm. hell exists. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because now it's a lot of talks about the last days and what's going on in the last days. The prophecies and all the different things to come. The FEMA, the Jade Helm, and all the different things we see part that are, that are taking place as far as prophecy. Mm -hmm. And those things are very important because they give us a piece by piece blow by blow breakdown of what will come before Christ returns so those things are very important okay but even more so important is what happens to our souls after it leaves, leaves our body because the reality is that what's taking place in the earth is only temperamental it's only temporary it will not take place forever but what happens after our souls leave our bodies is eternal it is eternal so once you've been judged, there's no turning back. With the prophecies that are taking place in the earth, we can see the prophecies taking place and we can change. We can make the correction. We can't make that correction once it's all said and done. Okay? So that's the importance of hell and we're going to go into this piece by piece. If you can read this again in the book of 2 Peter 2 and 4. <clears throat> 
For if the Most High spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. So the angels are being reserved unto judgment. And we will soon enter into that ultimate judgment, that judgment that is set by the Creator. Let's jump to the book of Jude 1 and 14 in the New Testament. Go ahead. Uh, the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Most High, or the Lord, cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Now I need you to start up a few verses. At verse, in fact, start at verse 13. Uh, verse 13, go ahead. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars. So the Bible calls them wandering stars. Go ahead. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And that blackness of darkness forever is speaking about what? Hell. Go ahead. Verse 14. And Enoch also. The seventh from Adam prophesied of these, so, saying... So Enoch also prophesied of these. Speaking about who? Who did Enoch prophesy about? The angels. The angels. Which angels? The angels? We just read it. Which angels? <laughs> Which kept not their first estate. We didn't necessarily read that one, but the one we just read. If you can just... Anyone? The angels that sinned. The angels that sinned. Exactly. He got verse 16. All right, 1 and 6, yeah, read that. Jude 1 and 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate. And the angels which kept not their first estate, like you just mentioned, go ahead. But left their own habitation. But left their own habitation. What was their ha habitation? The high holy heavens, as it tells us in Enoch. Go ahead. He have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So again, we're hearing about these everlasting chains under darkness. So for those who think that these chains are just speaking about the chains of slavery, of the tran transatlantic slave trade, the Bible tells us that these chains are everlasting. The chains of our slavery in this earth are just, tempor are just temporary. We will soon be delivered from this physical slavery. Whereas these chains will never, those who are bound in these chains will never be released. Go ahead. Uh, jump back down to 14. Jude 1 and 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, so, saying... So Enoch, who was seven generations from Adam, prophesied of these, saying what? Go ahead. Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Verse 15. To execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Right, so this is what judgment is about. This is the purpose of judgment. Read that again. Verse 15, to execute judgment upon all. To execute judgment upon all, go ahead. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds. So when God brings forth the judgment, he's gonna convince all the ungodly of their ungodly deeds. Go ahead. Which they have ungodly committed. Which they have ungodly committed. Go ahead. And of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Exactly. Like Christ stated, that every word shall be taken to count in the day of judgment. Every idle word. So all the hard speeches of those that have spoken against the Most High will be brought before them on the day of judgment. Okay. So this is what the Most High's judgment is all about. Go ahead. Verse 16, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's person or men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Right. Now, we're going to go into the account of Enoch a bit later. But before we go into Enoch, we're going to jump. We're going to stay in the Bible. We're going to jump to the book of St. Matthew, or better yet, St. Luke, chapter 16, verse 19. Okay, uh, the book of Luke, chapter just, sixteen, and these are just scriptures showing us in the Bible the existence of hell and what the Bible says about hell. Okay, 
chapter St. Luke chapter 16 verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Right, so what is Christ going into with this parable? What is Christ explaining with this parable? Anyone? That's part of it, but what is what is Christ showing as far as this this parable? What is he explaining as far as what happens to the soul? That's part of it. That's part of it. Read it again, Mark. It shows that your soul never dies. The soul is eternal. Okay. So after this man died, something happened with his soul. Mm -hmm. Okay? He just wasn't in some eternal sleep for the rest of eternity. His soul was taken, and it was brought where? And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. So he was brought into Abraham's bosom. Go ahead. The rich man also died. And was buried. So the rich man also died and was buried. What happened to the rich man? Verse 23. <clears throat> and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment. So the Bible says, in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. So there is a place of judgment called hell, which contains what? Torments. Mm -hmm. Torments of your soul. Okay, for some people this may be hard to understand why the creator would create such a place. Why would an all-loving God have a place in which souls are taken to be tortured and tormented for eternity? And when we say eternity, you've got to realize how long eternity is. How long is eternity? Very long. There's no limit, right? There's no limit you can put on the time of eternity. And just to give an example, we've been on this earth, how long? Some of us 25, 26, 30 years, 40 years. And it seems like the longest time ever. Imagine a time that has no time, or a place that has no time. And your soul is being tormented forever and ever and ever. There's no relief, there's no deliverance. That's all you have to look for. Go ahead. <clears throat> and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. Now you see that? <clears throat> you see that import the importance of what we just stated? Yeah. He said who? Father who? Abraham. Father Abraham. So this man was a child of Abraham. But yet, he found himself in torments. What is to show us? No. It's not down to your blood lineage. Just being a child of Abraham will not get you into the kingdom. The Most High will torment you just as quick as he'll torment anyone else. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 24. <clears throat> and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. So Lazarus on earth was a beggar. He was poor. The, other, the rich man had everything that a man can dream of. It says he fared sumptuously. Right? But now on the other side, on the spiritual side, the rich man was at Lazarus's behest, asking that if Lazarus can be sent over just to put a drop of water on his tongue. 
You see that? You see how the rows are switched? Mm -hmm. So another thing is showing us is just because you're rich in this earth don't mean that you're rich in the kingdom to come. Flesh shall be less, less shall be first. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our possessions in this earth mean absolutely nothing to the Most High. None of us can buy our way into the kingdom. Okay. Go ahead. That he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. So in life you received good things. You were prosperous. You had everything a man could dream of. Go ahead. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But Lazarus received evil things. Go ahead. But now he is comforted. Now he is comforted. Mm. Okay. As, the, as Christ says, blessed are the poor. <clears throat> right? Because the poor will receive what? The kingdom of heaven. The meek, shall inherit the, the meek shall inherit the earth. Exactly. Go ahead. And thou art tormented. And you are tormented. <clears throat> so that prosperity doctrine is kicked out of the window. <clears throat> because you have a Bentley and a large house and nice clothes and a huge mega church, that don't mean the Most High is in your presence or the Most High is with you. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Exactly. So in the midst of us is a great gulf. As you stated earlier, there's separations in this region we call hell. Mm -hmm. You have a great gulf in between them. If Lazarus wanted to go over mm -hmm. and give this man relief, he has no power to. Mm -hmm. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. You see that? The rich man stated that, listen, because I beheld this place, I've experienced this place, can you please send someone from here to warn my five brethren? Right? And this is a testament to all those who don't believe that hell exists. Because you have some people who have the mindset that, well, I'll see when I get there. That's not the right way to think because once you get there, there's no, there's no getting out. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have some people who think like that. They're going to get there and then they'll find out then. No. Mm -hmm. They don't work like that. Okay? So he says, Send my five brethren and testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Mm -hmm. So he wanted people to be sent back up on earth to tell them of the torment to come. What was Abraham's response? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 29. Abraham saith unto, unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Read that again. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. So what was Abraham saying to this, <laughs> this rich man? <laughs> what was he saying to this rich man? He's saying, listen to the, the statutes and commandments given by the men of God on the earth. What else was he saying? And the prophecies. The prophecies? So what was in the prophecies, what was in Moses and the prophets hmm. that would have... Yeah, well, the law, statutes, and commandments that he should follow so he Hill. doesn't end up in... You have the law, statutes, and commandments. What else? Hill. Moses and the prophets gave a testament of a judgment to come. They all gave a, a testament of a judgment that would come. Now, whether they went into great detail of hell, it doesn't go into that in the... Five, first five books of Moses but as far as there being judgment mm -hmm. that was set forth and it, it made known unto the children of Israel mm -hmm. okay the prophets speak about hell mm -hmm. in grave detail mm -hmm. when you piece the precepts together mm -hmm. so the what he's saying is that it was set before you the whole time yeah. it was in your records mm -hmm. okay so now they have a choice they can either take heed to Moses and the prophets, mm -hmm. or they can be like you and eventually end up in this place. 
Okay? Mm-hmm. So that's the choice we have. We don't have a chance in which we can get there and then decide to make a decision to say whether we want to be there or not. Our decision as to where we would be for the rest of eternity are made here on earth. This is the testing ground. How we live our lives here will determine where we get on the other side. As Christ said, he says, lay up treasures not on earth where moth and the canker do of rust, but in heaven where the, the, the moths and the cankers and the thieves cannot get to. They can't get to your riches in heaven. Okay? So that's the mindset we must have. All right? Not riches on earth, but riches in heaven, which will determine where we'll be for the rest of our life. Because based on what we're going to read about hell, I don't think any of us are built for what the Most High got prepared for those fallen angels. Okay? Go ahead. Uh, Verse 30. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. See? Mm -hmm. If someone went from the dead, they'll believe at least, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 31. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets... If you don't hear Moses and the prophets... Go ahead. Neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. They will not be persuaded, even if one came from the dead. Okay? Thus saith the Lord. Here it is, you got Christ, the Son of the Most High, sent from heaven, coming to the earth to preach unto mankind, and how was he treated? No one believed him. In fact, they wanted to kill him because... He called himself the son of God. Okay? So how would someone just coming from hell and <laughs> telling you that hell exists, how is that going to change anything? It's basically what Abraham is telling. Exactly. It's not going to change anything. Okay? All right. So let's move on to Job 11 and 7. Just more scriptures which testify of this place called hell. And after we read these, we're going to go back into the book of Enoch. And hopefully, if we have time, we'll go into Josephus' discourse on Hades. Okay? Job 11, verse 7. Uh, The book of Job, chapter 11, verse 7. Canst thou, by searching, find out the Most High? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as high as heaven. What canst thou do? deeper than hell what canst thou know right so again this is a scripture which testifies of a place called hell okay that's the reason why we went to Job let's go to Exodus I'm going to try to keep I'm trying to slow down to make sure you all can follow and get there with me so just be patient with me Uh, Proverbs Proverbs. Proverbs 7 and 24 Proverbs chapter 7, verse 24. Hearken unto me now therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Right, so this is Solomon giving wisdom unto his children. Go ahead. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell going down to the chambers of death. Right, and this is dealing with, uh, this context is dealing with the adulterous woman, okay, when you read the whole thing. So read that again, verse 27. Uh, Her house is the way to hell. So the Bible states her house is the way to hell. Go ahead. Going down to the chambers of death. Going down to the chambers of death. The Bible testifies that there are chambers in hell there are chambers in hell now to further prove that and elaborate we're going to go into the apocrypha in the book of second Ezra, the fourth chapter okay second Ezra 4 and 33 Second uh, Esther chapter 4 verse 33 Then I answered and said How and when shall these things come to pass? Wherefore 
are our years few and evil? Right. So Ezra, like many of the prophets, was asking, when shall these things come to pass? Speaking about the prophecies, the coming of Christ, those who would eventually be delivered from hell, as we'll read. Verse 34. And he answered me, saying, Do not thou hasten above the Most Highest, for thou haste is in vain to be above him, for thou hast much exceeded. Did not the souls also of the righteous ask questions of these things in their chambers? Read that again. Did not the souls also of the righteous ask questions of these things in their chambers? So did not the souls of the righteous ask of these things in their chambers? The souls of the righteous asked about that one who would come and release them from hell and death. Okay? And who would bring that everlasting life. Go ahead. Saying, how long shall I hope on this fashion? How long shall I hope in this fashion? How long shall we be in this state before we're changed? Before we're resurrected? Because we know all of the fathers were told about one who would come. Mm -hmm. They were all, a testament was given to all of the fathers that one would come and bring forth the promises as well as the promise of eternal life. Okay? You can read about them in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. All right? We know Adam was told about what? What was the prophecy given to Adam about Christ? Right, exactly. Genesis 3.15. He was told about the war between the woman seed and the serpent seed. Yeah. That was a testament to Adam that there would be a war between seeds. And one of those seeds, which is the woman seed, would overcome the serpent seed. Okay? We have Enoch, where it tells us that Enoch prophesied of these. When you read the book of Enoch, does it not testify of Christ, the Messiah? Okay? We have Shem. <clears throat> what does the Bible say about Shem? It says that he is Melchizedek. But when we break it down, we know he's Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say about Melchizedek in his comparison with Christ? King and priest. He would be a king and priest. Mm -hmm. A king and priest after the order of who? Order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. So Shem was a testament of one that would come as a king and priest. Who was that? Christ. Abraham. When was Abraham shown? He'd be a father of many nations, right? And but what else? Of the earth will be blessed what, what sign was he given, though? What sign was Abraham given of this, this coming seed? Do we re remember the story of Isaac being offered on the Mount Moriah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he says, and the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So Abraham was given a testament of Christ's coming. All of the fathers received the testament of this one that would come. They were just asking, when, when will we come? When will he come to fulfill this promise? Not if. Okay, exactly. Not if, but when. Mm -hmm. Because they had faith, but the Most High didn't show them everything. Mm -hmm. Okay? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 35. Did not the souls also of the righteous ask questions of these things in their chambers, saying, How long shall I hope on this fashion? How long shall we hope in this fashion? Go ahead. <clears throat> when cometh the fruit? of the floor of our reward. When shall we receive the fruit of our labors? All those who died in faith. Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 36. And unto these things Uriel the archangel gave them answer and said, Even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for he hath weighed the world in the balance. So the world is weighed in the balance. The most I have measured everything out. It tells us that he have declared the end from the what? The beginning. the beginning. So he weighed this thing out from the beginning. So it says he set the earth in the balance. Go ahead. Verse 37. Uh, verse 37. By measure hath he measured the times. So the times are measured. The most high have measured the times. Go ahead. And by number hath he numbered the times. Go ahead. And he doth not move nor stir them. And he will not move nor stir them. This is the importance of us going in, into time and realizing the importance of time. Go ahead. Until the set measures be fulfilled. Until the set measures be fulfilled. What is the set measure? Go ahead. Then answered I and said, 
O Lord, that bearest rule, even we all are full of impiety. And for our sakes, peradventure, it is that the flaws of the righteous are not filled because of the sins of them that dwell upon the earth. So he answered me and said, Go so thy read way. read that again? Uh, 39? Uh, verse 39. And for our sakes, peradventure, it is that the flaws of the righteous are not filled. Go ahead. Because of the sins of them that dwell upon the earth. So because of the sins of them that dwell upon the earth, is slowing up what the Most High is, is trying to do with his chosen, his elect. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Most High is looking for that number of the elect mm -hmm. who he's going to seal in this earth. Okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So he answered me and said, Go thy way to a woman with child, and ask of her, when she hath fulfilled her nine months, if her womb may keep the birth any longer so within what is, her. So what is Uriel doing with this parable? I think basically saying when, when the time for these things to be fulfilled comes, nothing can stop it. Exactly. Exactly. But why is he using the concept of a nine-month pregnancy spirit, uh, period? Why is he using that as an example? Because it's like a facsimile of the birth of the nation of Israel again. That's part of it. That's part of it. What did we read earlier about the Most High in time? He has measured the times. Mm -hmm. So everything is measured according to time. Mm -hmm. So the same way nine months is measured out for a woman to give birth, mm -hmm. time is measured out before that judgment will soon come. So he's using the parable of a woman giving birth and how that time is measured out to how judgment in the time of judgment is measured out. Okay? Go ahead. Okay. Verse 41. Then said I, No, Lord, that can she not. Right, so a woman can no longer hold her birth <coughs> after the time is called forth. Go ahead. <coughs> then said I, No, Lord, that can she not. And he said unto me, In the grave the chambers of souls are like the womb of a woman. So again, we're hearing about the chambers of those souls. Remember, she, she giveth, or she's like a door unto death, mm -hmm. like we read in Proverbs 7. Mm -hmm. And it speaks about the chamber. In fact, read that again if you're still holding it. What Proverbs? Yeah, Proverbs 7 and 26. Mm -hmm. Or Proverbs 7 and 27. 27. Right, go ahead. Her house is the way to hell. Her house is the way to hell, go ahead. Going down to the chambers of death. Going down to the chambers of death. So now we're just going into here to show you the chambers that exist in hell. There are chambers down there. This in particular is speaking about the chambers of the souls. Go ahead. Read that back in, uh, in Ezra 42. Uh, end of 41. In the grave the chambers of souls are like the womb of a woman. For like as a woman that travaileth maketh haste to escape the necessity of travail, even so do these places haste to deliver those things that are committed unto them. Right, so this shows us multiple things. It shows us that a hell exists. It also shows us that souls exist in this place we call hell, okay? And I keep reiterating that because there's many people who don't believe in hell and they'll give you these different chants of how if you're just digging into the ground, there's nothing in the ground and you know, it's just dirt down there or just whatever the case may be. We're showing you that according to the Bible, there is a holding place in this earth for souls. Whether you call it hell, Sheol, Hades, whatever the case may be, this place exists. All right. So now let's go back into the Bible. And now we understand. What else do we understand? We understand why Christ had to preach unto the souls in hell. Because they were waiting for the expectation to be released and to receive that everlasting life. So when Christ went to preach unto those souls in Hades, he was confirming everything that the Most High established when he told them about that expectation of the one who would come and release you from this death. So the Bible states, O death, where is thy, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Why? Because Christ overcame and allowed us to be free from death and the grave. Okay, everybody got that, Con? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go back to Ezekiel 31 and 15. 
And we're going to get a few more out the Bible, then we're going to go into Enoch. Go ahead. Thus saith the Most High Power, <clears throat> in the day when he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning, I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the floors thereof. And the great waters were stayed, and I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall, when I cast him down to hell, with them that descend into the pit. And all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. Here's that hell again. They, right. mm -hmm. Verse 17. They also went down into hell with him unto them that be slain with the sword, and they that were his arm, that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. To whom art thou thus like in glory, and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Most High Power. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. To show you that hell is for what? Judgment. And he's speaking about the judgment of the Pharaoh. All right. So now let's go back to the book of Second Peter's, where it speaks about Enoch, mm -hmm. or better yet, uh, Jude. Uh, Jude 1, where it speaks about Enoch. Mm -hmm. Also, Hebrews 11 and 5. And we're going to see what Enoch, the prophet, spoke of concerning hell. Hebrews or Jude first? Uh, you, can get, you can get Hebrews first. Hebrews 11 and 5 first. <coughs> Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because the Most High had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony. So before Enoch was translated, he had a testimony. What was his testimony? Go ahead. That he pleased the Most High. That he pleased the Most High. Now we can't read about this testimony in the Bible, correct? Can we read Enoch's testimony in the Bible? His full testimony in detail. We know the Bible speaks about him being translated. But as far as his testimony, how he pleased the Most High, that's not contained in the Bible in detail. Okay? So where do we go to get that information? Let's go to the book of Jude, where it speaks about Enoch. Go ahead. Uh, the book of Jude, 1 and 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Most High cometh with ten thousand of his saints. So the Most High cometh with ten thousand of his saints. So while he's reading Jude, I'm going to read the book of Enoch, chapter 1, verse 9. So read that again from the top. Jude 1 and 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. So the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Here's what Enoch says. And behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones. Go ahead. Verse 15 in Jude. To execute judgment upon all. To execute judgment upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds. Go ahead. Which they have ungodly committed. And to destroy all the ungodly and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness, which they have ungodly committed. Go ahead. And of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And of all the hard things which the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Mm -hmm. So the question is, where did Jude get this account concerning Enoch? We just read it to you out of the book of Enoch. Okay? And if anyone is wondering about the cover, you can just disregard the cover, okay, if it's any offense to you. It's the information inside the book that matters, okay? Yeah, Enoch 1 and 9, okay? 
So now let's see what Enoch has to say about this place called hell. Let's jump over to the book of Enoch. Let's start at chapter 9. And then Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth, and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said one to another, The earth, made without inhabitant, cries the voice of their crying up to the gates of heaven. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men make their suit, saying, Bring our cause before the Most High. Right, so this is explaining what was happening with mankind before the flood. Okay? They were crying unto the Most High, asking the Most High to have their suit, their suit meaning their prayer, to be brought before the Most High, that he may bring judgment upon the earth based on the things that were taking place. Let's go to chapter 10. In fact, chapter 10, verse 11. Ten and eleven, and the Lord said unto Michael, Go bind Samjaza and his associates, who have united themselves with women, so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. And when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for 70 generations in the valleys of the earth mm -hmm. till the day of their judgment and of their consum consummation till the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated. So this is in detail of what we read in Second Peter about those angels that sinned and were kept in everlasting chains of judgment. Now we're speaking about their judgment mm -hmm. and the chains in which they were bound. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Verse 13. In those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire. And those days, meaning the days of judgment, they shall be led off where? Uh, off to the abyss of fire. Off into the abyss of fire. So the whole time they, they, they're down there in those chains of everlasting judgment, the only hope they have <laughs> is to be tossed into fire. That everlasting fire that burneth forever in heaven. Okay? Now those of us who follow in that same suit as the fallen angels, what do you think our expectation is? What do you think our hope is? Exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Okay? Let's jump to the book of Enoch 22 and we'll start at verse 2. Uh, the book of Enoch chapter 22 verse 2. And there was in it four hollow places deep and wide and very smooth right so you remember we read about the chambers of the souls in the book of second address mm -hmm. right now we're reading about the divisions of those chambers as explained in the book of enoch it says that there were four hollow places that were what deep and wide and very smooth go ahead how smooth are the hollow places and deep and dark to look at so it's a place of deep darkness okay go ahead Verse 3, Then Raphael answered one of the holy angels who was with me, and said unto me, These hollow places have been created for this very purpose, that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. So why were these hollow places created? That the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. So it was created for the sole purpose that the souls of the dead would wait in these hollow places. Go ahead. Yea, that all the souls of the children of men should assemble here. So there's a place where our souls go after we die. And Enoch is breaking down, or it's being broken down in Enoch by the angel Raphael, what happens to our souls when they leave our bodies. Go ahead. Verse 4. And these places have been made to receive them Till the day of their judgment. And they're waiting there until when? The day of their judgment. The day of their judgment. Go ahead. Until their appointed period, till the period appointed, till the great judgment comes upon them. Exactly. Go ahead. Verse 5. I saw the spirits of the children of men who were dead, and their voice went forth to heaven and made suit. Then I asked Raphael, the angel who was with me, and I said unto him, This spirit, 
Whose is it? Whose voice goeth forth and maketh suit? So whose voice is making its way before the Most High and petitioning <clears throat> to the Most High? Go ahead. Verse 7. And he answered me, saying, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel. So it states that this is the spirit that went, went forth from Abel. We remember in the Bible it tells us that Abel's blood cried unto the Most High. It mm -hmm. cried out unto the Father. Right. right? So now it's letting us know in the book of Enoch that his soul is in this place still making suit unto the Most High. Still crying out to the Father. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew. Who his brother Cain slew. Go ahead. And he makes his suit against him till his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth. And Abel cried unto the Most High, until the Most High destroyed Abel's seed from the face of the earth. We're going to go into that. Yeah. We're going to go into that. Okay. So read that again. Uh, from the top, verse 7. And he answered me, saying, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew. And he makes his suit against him till his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth. Right, exactly. So as his blood, as it tells in scripture, his blood cried unto the Father. It cried unto the Most High until when? Until Cain's seed was destroyed off of the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Was not Cain's seed destroyed off of the face of the earth? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Did any of his seed make it through the flood? No. His whole seed, his whole line was destroyed off the face of the earth. Okay, go ahead. And his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. Go ahead. Verse 8. Then I asked regarding it and regarding all the hollow places, why is one separated from the other so he's asking why is there separation in these places same way we read in luke it says there's a great gulf fixed in between mm -hmm. in which one cannot pass over from one place to the next mm -hmm. go ahead verse 9 and he answered me and said unto me these three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated go ahead. and such a division has been made for the spirits of of the righteous in which there is the bright spring of water and such has been made for sinners when they die and are buried in the earth and judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime here their spirits shall be set apart in this great pain till the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever and retribution for their spirits there he shall bind them forever and such a division has been made for the spirits, for those who make their suit, who make... Now, let me, I need you to read verse 10 again. Mm -hmm. Read that again, go ahead. Uh, verse 10. And such has been made for sinners when they die and are buried in the earth, and judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime. Go ahead. Here their spirits shall be set apart in this great... Pain. So it says their spirit shall be set apart in this great pain. So there's pain and torment for all those who are awaiting the Most High's judgment. Speaking about those who are on the other side of his judgment. Mm -hmm. For those who are on the right side of judgment, it states that there's a bright spring of water. Mm -hmm. And such has been made for those, if you can get back there. Uh -huh, verse 9. And he answered me and said unto me, these three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated. Right. So for the, the righteous, there's a different place, like we've mm -hmm. seen with Lazarus. For the wicked, they're waiting in great pain to be tormented. Okay? Or they are being tormented in great pain and are waiting for the ultimate judgment. Okay? Go ahead. And such a division has been made for the spirits of the righteous, in which there is the bright spring of water. Right. Let's jump back to verse 12. Uh, verse 12. In fact, the rest of verse 11. And torment of those. And torment of those who curse forever. And retribution for their spirits. There he shall bind them forever. So they shall be bound forever. Meaning eternity. Go ahead. Verse 12. And such a division has been made for the spirits of those who make their suit who make disclosures concerning their destruction, 
when they were slain in the days of the sinners. Such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous but sinners, who were complete in transgression. And of transgressors they shall be compassions, companions. companions sorry. But their spirits shall not be slain in the day of judgment, nor shall they be raised from thence. Go ahead. Then I blessed the Most High Power of glory and said, Blessed be my Lord, the Lord of righteousness, who ruleth forever. When they die and are buried in the earth, sorry, when they die, who ruleth forever. Right, that's it on that, that's right? That, yeah. Okay. So those are the divisions of this place we call hell, according to the book of Enoch. Okay. Now we're going to go into the book of Josephus, his discourse concerning Hades, which provides us more information of what takes place in this area we call hell, which the Greeks called Hades. Okay? And you can just read it out of here. And we're not going to read the whole thing. This is a pretty long testimony. But when you get the chance, please read this, uh, this testimony that Josephus gave concerning Hades. You can just start from one, right? Uh, this is an extract out of Josephus' discourse to the Greeks concerning Hades. Now as to Hades, wherein the souls of the righteous and unrighteous are detained, it is necessary to speak of it. Hades is a place in the world not regularly finished, a subterraneous region. So subterranean means under the earth. And it states that it's a place where both the souls of the righteous and the unrighteous go. So both the righteous and unrighteous go to this one place. Go ahead. A subterraneous region wherein the light of this world does not shine. From which circumstance that in this region the light does not shine. It cannot be, it cannot be but there must be in it perpetual darkness. This region is allotted as a place of custody for souls. So it's been allotted, meaning it's been created from the beginning as a place for what? Of custody for souls. So it's the custody or for the custody or the holding of souls. Go ahead. In which angels are appointed as guardians to them. And angels are appointed in this region as guardians over these souls. Let's jump down. Let's jump down here to uh, three. Right. For there is one descent into this region, at whose gate we believe there stands an archangel with an host, which gate, when those pass through that are conducted down by the angels appointed over souls, they do not go the same way, but the just are guided to the right hand and are led with hymns sung by the angels appointed over that place. Exactly. So even though both souls go into one place, once they get there, the righteous are taken to the right and something else happens with the unjust. Hmm. They're separated. Go ahead. Sung by the angels appointed over that place. And it's key that this links with what we read in Luke as well as with Enoch, with the chambers of the souls. Go ahead. Unto a region of light in which the just have dwelt from the beginning so of the world. So from the beginning of the world, the just have dwelt in this region, which we know now is the bosom of Abraham. Okay, but before then it was just a place in which the souls went who were righteous. So from the beginning until the time of Josephus, until now, these souls are waiting. And the same goes for the unjust. All the way from the beginning, those souls are waiting up until now. How long has it been from the time of Adam until now? About what, 6,000 years roughly? Mm -hmm. Just about 6,000 years roughly? So for roughly 6,000, just under 6,000 years, so to speak, there's been souls waiting in that area who have been tormented day and night and are waiting to be tossed into that eternal lake of fire. Okay? And the judgments they're going through are unspeakable. Okay? Your greatest horror movie could not recreate what takes place in this region for those who are, are going through these torments. Okay? 
Go ahead. Uh, not constrained by necessity, but ever enjoying the prospect of, of the good things they see and rejoice in the expectation of those new enjoyments which will be peculiar to every one of them and esteeming those things beyond what we have here with whom there is no place of toil no burning heat no piercing cold nor are any briars there but the countenance of the fathers and of the just which they see always smiles upon them right so they get to see the faces of the righteous forefathers the face of Abraham Isaac Jacob Joseph Okay, the prophets, they're, they're beholding these men, right? So their hope, their expectation is that when this is over, we're going to be resurrected unto eternal life, like the Most High promised. Okay, go ahead. We're going to receive that reward that everyone has been speaking about or that the Most High have told us about. Okay, go ahead. While they wait for that rest and eternal new life in heaven, which is to succeed this region this place we call the bosom of abraham so this is the place we call the bosom of abraham like we read in luke go ahead now this is for the unjust let's see if, let's see what they receive as the unjust go ahead uh, verse four but as to the unjust they are dragged by force to the left hand by the angels allotted for punishment no longer going with a good will so they're dragged to the left hand side by angels okay whereas those others are guided by the hands of angels these guys are dragged okay go ahead but as to the unjust they are dragged by force to the left hand by the angels allotted for punishment no longer going with a good will but as prisoners driven by violence but they become prisoners driven by violence which means they become prisoners of violence they are tormented by those angels that are created for torment as it tells us in the in the book of Sirach that the Most High have spirits that he have created for judgment those that he have created for torment well these are those angels these are part of those angels which the Most High created for those who will receive torments okay go ahead to whom are sent the angels appointed over them to reproach them and threaten them with their terrible looks and to thrust them still downwards now those angels that are set over these souls drag them into the neighborhood of hell itself so it states that they drag them into the neighborhood of hell itself when? who when they are hard by it continually hear the noise of it so when they're brought next to it they hear they continually hear the noise of it they hear the noise of those screaming and those being tormented those going through pain in this region we call hell okay go ahead and do not stand clear of the hot vapor itself but when they have a nearer view of this spectacle as of a terrible and exceeding great prospect of fire they are struck with a fearful expectation of a future judgment right so when they come near this fire and they see the torment that happens in this fire it brings into their mind that this is the place where I will eventually spend my eternity so it makes them even more fearful of the judgment that they have been brought into now keep in mind that all of these people had chances mm -hmm. on earth to turn to the Most High to get themselves right with the Most High, to clean themselves up, to prepare for this judgment. So before anyone passes a judgment on the Most High and says that the Most High is not just for creating such a place for these souls, and to say that the Most High is not right for creating such a place for souls, keep in mind that this is the same God that warned us over and over, mm -hmm. sent us prophets over and over, left us a record that we can read up until our time concerning this judgment okay gave us laws statutes and commandments which will keep us from receiving the judgment before he decides to now say that listen i gave you all these shots and all these chances you didn't take them that's it you're over here with the rest of these guys who are being tormented from the beginning or who have been tormented from the beginning okay so the most high has been merciful on this point he sent his only begotten son 
to die for us so that we can have a chance to receive the promises and to receive the eternal life, okay? Mm -hmm. So that we can be brought back to the Father. <clears throat> he did all these things. So it's not the Most High that's unmerciful. It's not the Most High that's unjust. Like it tells us in Ezekiel, they say the Most High is not right and his way is not right. The Most High says, you children of Israel, your way mm -hmm. is not right. You're unjust, okay? The Most High have done everything he could on his part. All right, mm -hmm. go ahead. They are struck with a fearful expectation of a future judgment and in effect punished thereby. And not only so, but where they see the place of the fathers so they're punished just the, the thought of them going into this eternal fire torments them that's a part of their punishment also go ahead and not only so not only so but where they see the place or the place of the fathers and of the just even hereby are they punished for a chaos deep so when they look to the other side and they see the fathers dwelling in righteous habitation and all those who have been taken to the other side like the rich man seeing Lazarus taken to the other side. That is a torment unto them. Because in their mind, like it tells us in Second Ezra in the annotated Apocrypha, they look and they say, how could we have rejected such a great power? How could we have rejected such a great God in all his glory? This comes into their mind and that in itself becomes a torment unto them. You understand? So when it comes to this thing, we don't have to try to convince people when people say they don't believe in hell or the Bible is a fairy tale and that's a myth. Listen, I'm not here to convince you. I'm going to tell you what the most I say. If you don't believe, this is what you got to wait for. Okay? And I'm going to touch on that as it, as it ends because a lot of people get into this thing where they're trying to persuade people. When the most I says, when, or when Paul says, do I persuade men or do I persuade the most I? If we're seeking to persuade men, we're always going to fall short because men always find an excuse not to believe something. We're only here to persuade the Most High and let the Most High know that we believe that this place exists. And because we know it exists, we're going to testify this unto the earth. It's up to the earth to decide whether what they want to believe. Okay? So that's our job. So when you get people who don't believe, you read their judgment. This is what the Bible says. You don't believe, this is what you're going to receive. Shalom. Okay? There's no need for a back and forth. Go ahead. Even hereby are they punished, for a chaos deep and large is fixed between them, insomuch that a just man that have compassion upon them cannot be admitted. So a just man that has compassion, one like Lazarus, who seen the rich man going through torment, looked over and had enough compassion to want to go over to the other side and give him that drop of water, couldn't. He had no power to. So the deep thing about it is we may be on this side and we may see those who we know and love on the other side going through all types of torment. And we want to go over to the other side and bring them over or to bring them comfort and we will have no power to. Why? Because they had the same exact chance we had. Okay? They had the same exact chance we had. Now, it's on our part, again, our part is to be like watchmen and to warn them of the judgment to come. If we don't warn them, then their blood is on our head. Okay? If we do warn them, the blood is on their head. You had the chance to believe. You were told. You didn't believe. You didn't follow. That's it. Okay? It's the same thing you may see people that first were in the truth, dropped off, went into atheism, went into Buddhism, went into all different types of things, okay? Went back into the church, went into Islam. You may see those people on the other side going through torment, okay? And another thing I want to bring out before we go back into it, this is the importance of the love we have for one another. Our love for one another cannot just be based on a carnal emotion. When we look at each other, we're not just looking at human beings or people. We're looking at souls. Okay? We're looking at souls that will eventually receive a judgment. So, even though I may tell you something that you may not like and may hurt your feelings for the moment, I'm telling you this because I love you. Your anger is temporary. 
the judgment is eternal. Okay? So I would rather have you upset for this little bit of time than for you to actually do something that's wrong and have to go through hell forever. Okay? That's the mindset we must have towards one another. Even those who we don't know. You may not know someone, but you love them enough for them not to want to go through this torment that we're reading about. Okay? That's, that must be our mindset when we're operating in this earth. Okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <clears throat> in so much that a just man that have compassion upon them cannot be admitted, nor can one that is unjust, if he were bold enough to attempt it, pass over it. Exactly. Now I just need you to read this one last part, and we're going to go back into the Bible to finish off. <clears throat> Uh, verse 5, and this is the extract out of Josephus' discourse to the Greeks concerning Hades. Mm -hmm. This is the discourse concerning Hades, wherein the souls of all men are confined until a proper season, which the Most High hath determined, when He will make a resurrection of all men from the dead, not procuring a trans- a transmigration. transmigration of souls from one body to another. So the Most High is not dealing with a transmigration from, or a transmigration of souls from one body to the next. What does that mean? Reincarnation. 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 Your body leaving one and going into another, or your soul leaving one body and going to the next. The Most High is not dealing with that. That's what Josephus is saying. <laughs> Go ahead. Which the Most High have determined when he will make a resurrection of all men from the dead, not procuring a transmigration of souls from one body to another, but raising again those very bodies. But he will raise again those very bodies, those same exact bodies which we have now, will be raised again at the last day. Okay? So we don't have another chance after this to try to get things together. There is no second life or third life you're going to get to try to work things out. Okay, that's that's a fairy. That's a fairy tale. Hell is not the fairy tale. Reincarnation is the fairy tale. Okay, and all those who believe in that have been greatly deceived. And I pray that the Most High put the Spirit on them that they may wake up before this judgment. Okay, because this thing is real. All right, let's go back into the Bible, and we're going to finish off. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 14, because Satan will also be judged <laughs> and placed in this eternal fire. Isaiah 14 and 9. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee even all the chief ones of the earth. It have raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. So hell have been prepared for Satan to come. His judgment is all already set, is what the Bible is saying. Go ahead, and it says to do what? It stir up, up the dead, even all the chief ones of the earth. It have raised up their thrones of all the kings. Mm -hmm. Okay, or from, from their thrones all the kings. So all the kings of the earth who operated under Satan will receive the same judgment as their Lord. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 10. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? So all those guys who followed Satan is going to look and say, Are you become as weak as we? What does this mean? Satan gave them all that power and technology in this earth. They thought they were going to be able to escape. When they see Satan coming through those gates of hell, they're going to say, man, I thought you was going to be the guy who was going to get us out of this. Are you become as weak as we? Are you just like us? Meaning you have no power just like us. You are weak just like us. All right? So all those who believe in that Satan got some plan for them, he's going to resurrect them and give them everlasting life, you got another thing coming. He's going to meet you right there. You love Satan so much, you're going to meet Satan. You're going to be able to deal with him for the rest of eternity. Okay, hell Satan, right? <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 11. Uh, middle of verse 10. 
Art thou become like unto us? Are you like us? Meaning Satan is going to be judged just the same way these nations are going to be judged. Go ahead. <clears throat> thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Go ahead. Verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? That's how we know it's talking about Satan. Go ahead. Son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Go ahead. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. Right. So this is the game he told to all of the nations. Okay. This is what he convinced all the nations of. I'm going to get back into the heavens. I'm going to need your help. I'm going to get it done. But I need you all to help me. And when, you, when we have finished this plan, we're going to overthrow the Most High. All of you who have died, I'm going to bring you back to life. They even got technology now. What do they call it? Cryonics? Where somebody freezes their body or freezes their brain or something like that in, in hopes that they'll be brought back to life through science. This is the stuff that people have been waiting for through Satan. Believing that Satan has some type of power. Okay? But go ahead. Middle of 13. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Go ahead. I will be like the Most High. I'm going to be exactly like the Most High. The same way the Most High got his eyes throughout the earth watching all things, I'm going to have my eyes throughout the earth watching all things i.e. your satellites and your cameras and all the different technology they have okay the most i got his elect his chosen i got my elect and my chosen okay the most i can resurrect souls believe me i'll be able to resurrect souls i'm going to be exactly like the most high go ahead verse 15 yet thou shalt be brought down to hell yet you shall what be brought down to hell. Yet you will be brought down to hell. This is his judgment. The Bible is confirming that Satan will also be judged with all of those nations who have deceived. Go ahead. To the sides of the pit. To the sides of the pit. So you're not going to be in the sides of the north. You're going to be in the sides of the pit. Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. And all those chief ones and all those kings that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. And say what? And consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Is this the God we put all our trust in? We invested million, billions of dollars, trillions of dollars into this plan to create all this technology and do all these things following after this, this guy? Okay, we didn't destroy the earth following after this guy. You mean to tell me that this is the same guy that, that, that had all this power and all this technology? Why is he? Why is he here with us? Why is he suffering the same things we're suffering? Go ahead. <clears throat> that did shake kingdoms. That did shake kingdoms. Go ahead. That made the world as a wilderness. Right. He destroyed the world. Destroyed the earth. Go ahead. And destroyed the cities thereof. That open not the house of the prisoners. Go ahead. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. Go ahead. For thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Right, so it's the judgment of Satan in the end. And the nations will behold that and realize that they have been greatly deceived. Okay? Acts 2.29. Where does Christ come in? Because it's almost impossible for us to speak about hell without speaking about Christ. Acts 2.29. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Acts chapter 2 verse 29 Men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried and his sepulcher is with us unto this day Right so when David spoke about his soul being left in hell he wasn't speaking about himself is what uh, Peter is explaining Go ahead mm -hmm. 
verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that the Most High had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Right, so we made a promise to David that of the fruit of his loins. So David was also shown or given a similitude of this one that would soon come, okay, to deliver us. And he was told that it would come through his loins. Now imagine that. Imagine being the man, or imagine being the man being told that the Christ, the one who would do all the great works that we acknowledge coming out of his Bible would come out of your loins. Okay? That's one of the greatest promises that can ever be made. Okay? And that promise came through the loins of David. Go ahead. Uh, verse 31. He seeing his... He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ. So when he saw this, and he prophesied concerning this, he was seeing the resurrection of Christ. So he was speaking about the resurrection of Christ. Go ahead. That his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. So Christ's soul was not left in hell, neither did it see corruption. Go ahead. This Yeshia hath the Most High raised up, whereof we are all our witnesses and Peter and the disciples were all witnesses of this one who died and rose again okay let's get the book of Revelations 118 mm -hmm. in fact let's jump let's jump to 10 and 9 right Revelations 118 speaks about Christ having the keys to hell and death mm -hmm. all right so that's a very good precept going into this lesson. Let's go to uh, John chapter 10, verse 9. St. John. Uh, St. John, yes, sir. St. John 10 and 9. Mm -hmm. uh, the book of St. John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So Christ is setting the record straight, letting it be known that he is the door. And it's only through him that we can escape this judgment. It's only through Christ that we can escape this judgment. Go ahead. Uh, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. Christ says, I am come that they may have life. Not just life in this earth, but eternal life. Okay, go ahead. And that they might have it more abundantly. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So the good shepherd who is Christ gave his life for the sheep. He gave his life so that we may live. So that we can receive that eternal life which was promised of the Father. Go ahead. Verse 12. But he that is in hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep. So he who is in Harlan don't care for the sheep. He don't care if your soul burns in eternal hellfire. Okay? Mm -hmm. He's just there for whatever the case may be. Go ahead. Seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep. Go ahead. And fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Go ahead. The Harlan fleeth because he is in Harlan and careth not for the sheep. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. And I am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Right. So Christ says, as the Father knoweth me, even so I know of the Father. And Christ says that no man knoweth the Father but the Son. So in other words, none of us can jump over Christ to try to get to the Most High. Christ is the only way to the Father. He's the only one that knows the Father, and he taught us of the Father. Right? So in order to get to the Father, we must go through Christ. Go ahead. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Right. So they're speaking about the rest of the tribes which were scattered at the time of Christ's coming. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, there's more scriptures here which go into the breakdown of hell but that's pretty much uh, what we have concerning time um, 
So what if someone doesn't believe in this testimony of hell, which we just gave? Exactly. Okay. If others do not believe that hell exists and that there will be an eternal judgment, that don't change what the Most High say. We know, according to the Bible, that when it's time for judgment, the Most High is going to use these records to judge us. Okay. All those who believe in them other books, the Egyptian Book of the Dead and the Gita and the Quran. Most I ain't pulling out those books on the day of judgment and judging you out of those books. He's going to pull out these records and judge you. Okay? So it's best for you to link in, find out what the Most High's judgments are, and get right with the Most High. Okay? Because regardless of what you think, this thing is real. Yeah. Okay? This thing is real. And we're responsible for letting others know. Yeah. Letting each other know, keeping each other reminded of these things, mm -hmm. that judgment is coming. Let's get it together. You see each other going off? Let's get it together. Mm -hmm. Because none of us want to be on that side where Lazarus is and looking and seeing our loved ones, whether it be physical family or family in this truth, going through those torments, mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on the other side with the rich man looking over and seeing y'all enjoying yourself. And I'm sitting there like, man going through torment in hell okay just to give you an example all right so hopefully that um gave some edification and understanding on hell there was a question earlier concerning a scripture which says sister uh if you can ask your question again okay we're gonna get that all right and let's let's actually let's get that preset you're you're mentioning. Let's start at verse eleven, Job three and eleven. And I'll see if I can find while you're reading it, I'll see if I can find the exact one. <clears throat> Job three eleven. Mm-hmm. Why died I not from the womb why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly so Christ or uh, Salaki, yeah. Job is asking I'm talking about Christ so much still there let's uh, read that again uh, Job 311 why died I not from the womb why did I not give up the ghost or the spirit when I came out of the belly so Job is asking why didn't he die from the time of birth go ahead uh, verse 12 why did the knees prevent me or why the breast that I should suck for now should I have lain still and been quiet I should have slept then had I been at rest mm -hmm. go ahead with kings and counselors of the earth so he says then should I should I have slept then I would have been at rest mm -hmm. now we're gonna see that Job is just dealing with the physical body Okay. Go ahead. Uh, verse 14. With kings and counselors of the earth, which build desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold, or filled their houses with silver, or as in hidden, untimely birth I had not been, as infants which never saw light, there the wicked cease from troubling. So it says, there the wicked cease from troubling. And there Correct. the weary be at rest. And there the weary be at rest. Mm -hmm. So it says, the wicked cease from troubling and the weary be at rest. So this is now going into those who are in hell. All right. Or in that place of judgment. Mm -hmm. Now I want to see if I can get the one. In fact, read on. Just read on. Uh, verse 18. There the prisoners rest together. There the prisoners rest together. Go ahead. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. Exactly. All right. Now, what Job is dealing with here is the fact that it says the wicked cease from troubling. So the wicked are no longer in power mm -hmm. from troubling those that are on the earth. And it says that the oppressed, read that again. 
There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. And they hear not the voice of the oppressor. Now there's one better than this. The one you're going into is a quite of a different vein. Let me see if I can find that exact one. Let me see if I can find the exact one you're speaking about. Now it's basically uh, the one, if I'm, if, I'm just param if I'm paraphrasing, just goes into the fact that those that are dead hear and speak not correctly, mm -hmm. that they have no power to hear or speak. Yes, yes. All right. Now I want to make sure that I find it so I can get the correct context. Let me see. I believe it's in scripture. It's just probably worded differently. Yeah. This one may come close. Let me see here. Let me see if I can find something here. It says here in Ecclesiastes 9 and 5, it says, For the living know that he shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the, mem mem the memory of them is forgotten. Now, there may be, let me see here. speak not and hear not when they're speaking about idols now there, there there is let me see here let me see now to to get to your question of course, we want to see if we can find the correct one. Mm -hmm. But until then, uh, if you mm -hmm. can, if you, when you find it, you can just let me know. Yeah. But we know that according to the Bible, mm -hmm. it tells us, it tells us that the Most High's presence is in both hell as well as heaven. Okay. Let's get Psalms 139 and 8. In fact, let's start at Psalms 139 and 7. Psalms chapter 139 and 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Right. So basically, mm -hmm. David is asking... Where can I go in this earth which can separate me from thy spirit and thy presence? Go ahead. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I go up to heaven, you are there. Go ahead. If I make my bed in hell. If I do what? If I make my bed in hell. If I make my bed in hell, go ahead. Behold, thou art there. Behold, thou art there. Okay. So the Most High still has a connection to all realms that exist in the earth. As the scripture state, it says, hell is naked before thee. Okay? In fact, let me get that. I see a few people. <laughs> uh, I see a few eyes wincing. Like, where you get that from? Let me get that real quick. Okay? The scriptures tell us that hell is naked before the Most High, which means there's nothing in this realm 
that can't cannot be accessed by the Most High. Let's get Job twenty six and six. Job twenty six and verse six. Hell is naked before him. Read that again. Hell is naked before him. Go ahead. And destruction have no covering. Destruction being the place of judgment, the place of torment. Have what? Have, and destruction have no covering. And destruction have no covering. Which means there's no place in this universe, heaven, hell, or earth, which the Most High cannot communicate with or access. Okay? So when it speaks about Abel's blood crying unto the, or Abel's spirit crying unto the Most High, the Most High can actually receive what Abel, or was able to receive what Abel was saying, because to the Most High, it's just everything is wide open. Okay? The Most High can visualize and see every and access every single realm that exists in this earth. Okay, or, yeah. or outside of this earth. Yeah, I have to dispel that Christian mindset that can have that there's a separate, such a separation. Mm. He's not going to go anywhere that's dark. So, right. these scriptures have just opened my eyes more right. to realize that we can dwell anywhere, whether it's in hell, whether it's in heaven. Right. Yeah. And of course, yeah. heaven, heaven is his throne, the earth is his footstool, but still, he does have access or can visualize that region and deal with that region okay right. Right. Thank you. yep I just, I just say it's not like necessarily to say that i wouldn't say that he would he dwells there i would say that exactly. he's omnipresent he's everywhere all at the same time exactly exactly he's everywhere all at the same time so there's nothing hidden from him right exactly exactly we're the only ones that are subject to realms we're the only ones that subject to what we can see or what we can deal with as far as earth. Right. As far as heaven, earth, hell, whatever exists in this an entire universe, the Most High has access and communication with and can deal with it any time. Okay? Thank you. It's no problem, sister. All right. So we're going to answer a few questions online before we close out. I'm going to open up this chat. And let me save the video before we forget. And let's get, let's see here, where it says the son of the stranger, look at that. Here's the precept in Isaiah. Fifty-six and six. Yes, sir, 56, and we can start at verse three. Isaiah 56 and verse 3. Neither let the son of the stranger that has... Let's start at verse, verse 1. Okay. Isaiah 56 and 1. Thus saith the Most High, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, mm -hmm. and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Most High have utterly separated me from his people. Read that again. The Most High have utterly separated me from his people. <clears throat> so let not the son of the stranger, as we read in Deuteronomy 23, say what? Uh, that have joined himself to the Most High. That have speak. joined himself unto the Lord, that have come to worship the Most High. Go ahead. Speak, saying, The Most High have utterly separated me from his people. That the Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Okay? Showing you that those of the nations and what the scripture consider a child born of a, uh, or, or what the scriptures call a bastard child, will also have a place in the Most High's congregation okay according to the bible the most High is not a respecter of persons in judgment okay and i'm going to say that boldly you know i have a lot of people who state that that respect of persons only belongs amongst the children of israel okay but according to the bible those who do right will be judged accordingly okay it's that plain and simple now you can jump down verse six uh, verse six 
also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Most High. So the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord, go ahead. To serve him and to love the name of the Most High Ahiah, to be his servants. And he loves the name of the Most High Ahiah. Go ahead. Every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. And he honors and keeps the Sabbath from polluting it. Go ahead. Verse 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Exactly. It should be called an house of prayer for all people. Now we're going to take you to the book of Zechariah to show you that all nations will be responsible for keeping these laws and these holy days in the kingdom. Okay. Let me see here. Is it Zechariah where it says the nation that cometh not up? I believe it's Zechariah 14. If they come not up to honor the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. 14 and 16. 14 and 16, the water brother. Read that. Uh, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which come against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king and the Most High of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Exactly. So all of those nations will be responsible for going from year to year and worshiping the Lord of hosts on the Feast of Tabernacle. Now the last I checked, the Feast of Tabernacle was a Hebrew holy day. <laughs> but yet, the Most High is putting it upon the nations and the kingdom to keep this holy day. Go ahead. Verse 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem mm -hmm. to worship the king and the most high power, even upon them shall be no rain. Even upon them shall be no rain. So they'll be cursed for not keeping the holy days in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is what the most high is dealing with. If there's others teaching something else concerning the nations or whatever the case may be, we can't speak to that. We can only speak to what the most high says in his prophecies. And what he says in his prophecies is that all nations who come to serve the Lord will be responsible for keeping his holy days, showing that they will be allowed in his congregation. Okay? Is there anything else you wanted to get? Uh, all right. Moving on to the next one. There was just one thing on the, uh, the no. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. First. Yep, go ahead. When people talk about... Um, the respect of persons. Right, go ahead. Uh, Were you at Romans 2? Romans 2 and 10. Uh, matter of fact, Romans 2 and 9. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Mm -hmm. Of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Right, so if you're a Jew and you're committing iniquity, you'll receive tribulation and anguish, just like a Gentile who commits uh, uh iniquity on this earth mm -hmm. alright it's no different but what uh, verse 10 but glory honor and peace but glory honor and peace go ahead to every man that worketh good go ahead to the Jew first to the Jew first go ahead and also to the Gentile and also to the Gentile verse 11 go ahead for there is no respect of persons with the most high so there is no respect of persons with the most high when it comes to judgment okay Someone says, why are the righteous in hell? Okay. Why are the righteous in hell? And let's go back to the book of Luke, the 16th chapter. And I'm not sure if you were here and we explained earlier that although all people go into one place, there's a separation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. You got that? As well as fact, let's just read the one in Enoch. Okay. The one in Enoch, which speaks about the separation of chambers. The chambers? Yep. Straight to the uh, straight to the verse which speaks about the chambers. Okay, you got Book of Enoch 22. And let's 
and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Then I asked regarding it and regarding all the holy places, the hollow places, excuse me. This is verse 8, Enoch 22 and 8. Then I asked regarding it and regarding all the hollow places. All the why, hollow places, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Why is one separated from the other? Why is one separated from the other? So there's a separation in these, these places. Mm -hmm. Same way on earth. The whole earth is on one plane. But when you go to Genesis, the 10th chapter, the Most High did what? He separated it according to the nations. Each nation has their section on this earth. Okay? It's the same way in Hades. There's, it's all one place, but it's divided into sections. Okay? That's it on that. Uh, that's it on that. That the word person, if you reference its meaning by means definition, to be a dead false mass. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't understand your question, David Ahaya. When you say the word, if you reference its meaning by definition, yeah, I, I'm not understanding your question, David Ahaya. Maybe you have to repost your question. Uh, someone says, is a generation a hundred years? In some instances, yes. Okay. In some, in some instances, a, a generation is 100 years, okay? Like, for example, with Abraham in Genesis, the 15th chapter, where it says, after four generations shall your children return unto this land. So 400 years from the time of Abraham, the children of Israel would return to the land of Canaan, okay? But that's just in some instances, all right? Uh, let's see here. So we're saying, where is the wilderness? Africa. Uh, where is the wilderness? Is it in Africa? Where is the wilderness? Okay. The thing is, we've touched on this in the past as far as the location of the wilderness and where it is in the earth and where the Most High would gather his people as it tells us in Baruch that it shall be in that self-same place in that self-same day that all that are gathered in that place will be saved or we will be protected okay as far as the location you can go back and check our lessons when we went into that that information okay someone says uh, when Daniel says time time and half a time is that time referring to 100 years the time of Daniel time time and a half time is not referring to 100 year intervals of time okay we'll, we'll have a lesson in the future on Daniel and the breakdown of the time times and a half a time okay someone says how do you go through Christ get baptized what else number one you must accept that he's the one who the most high sent for the remission of our sins you do that through baptism. Christ also says this. Let's get John 15 and 14. Mm -hmm. John 15, 14. Go ahead. Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. So Christ said, ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. Go ahead. So this is how Christ recognized those who are under him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. Go ahead. But I have called you friends, for all things that I, I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Go ahead. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Right. We didn't choose Christ. Christ chose us. Go ahead. And ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Exactly. Okay. Let's jump over to 14 and 15. Drop 14, 15. Uh, 14, 15. Mm -hmm. okay. 
right there. You love me? Uh, John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. So Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments. All right, that's one of the ways in which Christ identifies us as those that have accepted him. There's many other things. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. If your fruits show that it's the fruits of the Spirit, then yes, you're recognized as one under Christ who have accepted Christ. Okay? So really it's our actions and our works that determine who's our Lord and who we have accepted as our Deliverer, our Lord and Savior. Okay? okay I think someone found the uh, scripture on the earlier question. Okay, let's get uh, Psalms 115 and 17. Psalms, uh, Psalms 115 verse 17. Mm -hmm. The dead praise not the Most High, neither any that go down into silence. Right. Read that again. The dead praise not the Most High, neither any that go down into silence. Exactly. So the dead have no power to praise the Most High. Speaking about those that are physically dead. Okay, they have no power to praise the Most High, but the souls still have have life. They still continue on even after death. They still have power. Okay, like we mentioned earlier, after Abel died, what happened to his blood? In fact, let's read that in the Book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. Genesis 4, and this will be the last one before we close out. Uh, Genesis chapter 4. And let's get that point where it says, His blood cry up out. Uh, Genesis 4 and 10. Mm -hmm. And you'll start at 9. Yeah, verse 9. Yep. Uh, Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. And the Most High said unto Cain, Where is Abel? thy brother and he said I know not am I my brother's keeper mm -hmm. and he said what hast thou done the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground exactly the voice of thy brother's blood meaning his soul because the life is in the blood doeth what doeth cry unto me from the ground doeth cry unto me from the ground which means that soul still had power to cry out to the Most High. Okay? So with that, hopefully you, re you received edification through today's lesson. Uh, we're going to close out and we're going to open up to allow Brother and Elder Gabar Yasha'Allah in New York to continue on with the Sabbath uh, lesson. If you have any more questions, please send an email to gatheringasone at alwell.com. That's the word one at alwell.com. Uh, if you have anything as far as offerings or, or tithes and things of that nature, send your email to gathering as one the number one at AOL.com. Again, gathering as one the number one at AOL.com. Please be sure if you haven't already checked out the new gathering of Christ.org website to please do so. Mm -hmm. All right. So bless you. Shalom.